You've uh, fought Michael Bisping before. You know how big he is, and you've grappled with uh, George in practice. I've seen videos mm -hmm. of that. What's the size discrepancy going to be like between those two guys? Um, you know, uh, honestly speaking, it's not going to be really big. You know, George is George is one of the guys who I would say is surprisingly uh, a lot bigger than you think and a lot stronger than you think. You know, uh, walking around, he probably walks around at 195. I've seen him at 200 pounds, and he feels ridiculously strong. You know, I, I don't really know how he made 170 as long as he's been able to make 170. So um, I don't think there's going to be much size difference, to be honest. I think uh, GSP, I mean, uh, uh, Bisping may be a little bit taller. But besides that, when, when you see him on fight night, I think George probably will actually look like the bigger fighter. I spoke to Dan Kelly, and, you know, I, I get the sense that he needs some advice. Um, I saw you did a Mike Tyson impression for Embedded. Can, can Mike Tyson give some advice to Dan Kelly on how to beat Rashad Evans? No, why would Mike Tyson do that? <laughs> nah, you know, Mike, Mike would probably say, well, first of all, yeah, um, um, well, Dan Kelly, you, you, got, you got a tough fight in front of you, but, but first of all, you know, you got to remember who you are. But at the end of the day, he is Rashad Evans, and, and uh, he's a former champion. So just go in there and keep your chin down and, and just hope you don't get hit too hard. How much do you weigh right now, Rashad? Uh, I'm pretty light, man. I'm pretty light. I'm, I'm, I'm within striking range, within like the five, six pound range. So. When was the last time you weighed this little? This college, light. college, college. I was in college. Uh, I haven't been this light in forever. How are you feeling? Do you feel dehydrated? Do you feel lightheaded? Um, yeah, I feel okay. I feel yeah. okay. Like I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not telling myself that I can't have anything. If I want a, a little bit of nibble of food, I can have a little nibble. If I want a sip of water, I have a sip of water. So I haven't really got to like the crucial, crucial points where I can't have anything. Um, I haven't had much today, but uh, I did eat breakfast, so. Are you working with someone, a nutritionist? No, no, just been pretty much doing it myself. Do you regret the decision at this point to go down to 185? Um, nah, you know, I, I've been, I've been kind of mentally preparing for it all along, you know, even, even during camp, you know, I would have days where I just will completely fast, just nothing at all, you know? And, and I would do that just so I would just mentally put myself in a space where I was gonna be, you know, I would, I would not eat anything and I'll go run, and I'll do everything like I'll do a, a cut. So just so I get used to that, that feeling because getting used to that feeling of having the hunger pains and being dehydrated and not being able to drink, it, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a mental thing. You know, you, you mentally break and just be like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And I don't want myself to get like that. I don't, I don't want to mentally break uh, just, just before I was able to even get close to the weight. Did you know who Daniel Kelly was before they offered you him? Luckily for my analyst gig, yes, I oh, did. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think I was working the day he fought um, okay. Shoe Face. Yep. So, um, yeah, I knew who he was, but I'll, I'll be honest, I had to go back and, and look to remind myself. Were you surprised that it was him? Um, no, uh, well, well, because I, I, wanted, I wanted a big fight. Yep. I wanted a really, really big fight, but uh, the way it worked out with Anderson being booked and with Hector Lombard and, and, and those guys um, already being taken, uh, this fight just made made sense for me. You know, Ali was like, "Listen, just just get a fight in at 185, see how you're feeling, and you know, you get a guy who's tough who's going to push you, and then let me know how you how you feel in 85." Does it bum you out a little bit that you can't fight in Buffalo so close to home? I mean, this is the opportunity you've been waiting for, even more so than MSG, right? Yeah, this this is this is the one that heart hurts not being able to fight in Buffalo. Not yeah. being able to fight in Buffalo is 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 harder than not not being able to fight in New York, New York City. Just because, uh, like I said, you know, all my family's there, and you know, being able to to fight there for me would truly truly be a homecoming. And last quick thing, sorry, um, all the drama with the Black Zillions kind of falling apart as you prepare for this big fight, has it been a distraction? Has it been hard to focus with people wanting to know more and more about what really happened? No, nah, you know, not really, not really, not, not really because, um, you know, the, hard, the hardest part for me is already over. Okay. And I was just dealing with it live, dealing with it as it's unfolding, being pulled in different directions. You know, which side are you gonna choose? Are you gonna be, you know, with, with Henry Hoof or are you gonna be with, you know, the Black Zanes and, and be in this gym and stay with Glenn and just, all, all this, like a, a lot of, a lot of just like that, that part, you know, especially since that, you know, Glenn and I, we were so close, 
and to you know now I don't even I don't even speak to him. Wow. And it's just funny that you can be so close to somebody, you know, but then not even speak to him the next. And it's right. it's just crazy. Good luck, Rashad. Thank, Thank you. you. Rashad, what what motivates an OG like you at this stage of your career? Um, same thing that motivated me back in the day, and and that's just to to be the best, you know. But even more so now because I, I want to, uh, you know, I, I want to show that I still I still got it. What you think when you heard today, Daniel Kelly? Uh, I, I was like, okay, you know, I, I had to, I had to uh, brush up on it because I, I, uh, I looked, I, I called this fight when he fought Shoe Face. You know, I think I was working that day and I looked at, you know, kind of studied him a bit, but uh, you know, I had to refresh my mind a bit. Question: You think he did a opponent like this to get introduced to the one you fought the vision and kind of get your feet wet? Um, you know, yeah, I mean, and at the same time, you know, he's, he's nobody to overlook, you know, and I think that's one reason why he's on his winning streak that he's in right now is because of the fact that, you know, he's consistently overlooked, you know, he doesn't have the prettiest style, you know, uh, but he's effective, you know, and effectiveness, you know, beats out being pretty, being flashy and being technical at times. So he's able to do that. And because he's able to do that, you know, he's in the opportunity that he is in right now to fight me. How was that win Canelo Chavez? Yeah. One last question. How has being an analyst, how has it made you a better fighter? Um, it is, it's helped me because, you know, when I'm watching a fight and I'm breaking it down, you know, I have to, I have to break it down from so many different levels, you know, um, what their strength is, what their weakness is, you know, uh, what's their best chance of winning against this opponent with his set of skill set. So it just made me just really just look at a fight from a different basis from you know from everything from the movement just to just to just the whole total it made me see the sport totally different